Which syntax do you prefer, line 3 or line 5? Line 3 is a lot easier, but unfortunately it doesn't work. Line 5 is actually the only way to use JavaScript modules in a browser. This is part of the ES6 specification, and as of the creation of this video, which is at the beginning of 2020, it still is actually true, this limitation. So in browsers right now, you cannot do line three. You can only do line five. In other words, you cannot specify the name of the module that you want. You can only specify a URL for that module. The URL can be a full URL or it can be a relative URL, but it must be a URL. So this is a pretty big limitation of JavaScript modules and it's a known limitation. When ES6 came out, they knew that this was going to be a problem. And they created a browser specification to solve it. The browser specification is called import maps. Import maps, let's show you an example. Import maps are a script element within your HTML file. The script element has to have a type of import map and inside of it there's a JSON object. The JSON object then can say here's the name of my module, my bare specifier, and then here's my URL. So in this way we're able to now do line 3 here, import single spa. We don't have to specify a URL every time. This is very very nice from a developer experience perspective. Um, and let's go over, there are a couple variations of import maps. Let's go over the variations. Uh, one is that there are external import maps. So with an external import map, you say, here is the URL to download the import map itself. So the import map has to be hosted on a server. And you are saying, please, browser, go download the import map. It will tell you all of the names of the modules and all of the URLs for those modules. And then the final major variation of import maps is using scopes. So what this is doing here with scopes is supporting multiple versions of the same module within the same page. So in this case we have Lodash 3 and we have Lodash 4. And you might have some modules that require Lodash 3. They haven't upgraded yet to Lodash 4. And so you're forced to have both Lodash 3 and Lodash 4 on the page not great for performance. However, import maps do allow you to do this. How it works is that the scope matches the URL of the requester. So requester, what I mean is if the code that is attempting to load Lodash was itself downloaded on a URL that matches the scope. So if you have a module called A and it's in a module A folder, then it will get Lodash 4. However, any other request to get Lodash, any other import Lodash, will get it from Lodash 3. And so scopes, this is why scopes exist, is to allow for multiple versions of the same library. You've got Lodash, which is the same name. Sometimes it needs to be Lodash 3, sometimes it needs to be Lodash 4, and we use scopes to accomplish that. Let's uh, go back here and talk about browser compatibility. We have some bad news here. At, as of the creation of this video at the beginning of 2020, you actually cannot use import maps in browsers. So Chrome has an experimental implementation that is hidden behind a feature flag not turned on for users. And then Firefox, Safari, and Edge actually just have not implemented import maps at all. And so if you are looking to use in-browser JavaScript modules, then import maps are the key to a much, much better developer experience. However, if you want to use import maps, you actually can't because browsers don't support them. And so you're going to have to go look for a polyfill. There are a few polyfills that exist. The one that I use the most is called System.js. System.js allows you to um, use all of the features of import maps without having, you know, it's a polyfill, so without having to get your browser to do it. 
To wrap up here, let me just show you a couple examples of some HTML files and import maps that are live in production with organizations using them. Here's an HTML file where you'll notice that there is a system.js import map that is pointing to an external import map. Here is that external import map. And here are a few others. Just briefly, we'll show you these ones. Organizations are putting together their import maps saying, here are my in-browser modules, and here are the URLs to download my in-browser modules. I have some videos that talk about System.js. I also have some videos that talk about in-browser versus build time modules. So you might be thinking, I've been doing import React from React, or I've been doing import Vue from Vue or Angular core for a long time, and it works great. Um, that's because those modules are not actually hitting the browser. They're being compiled away before they hit the browser. Webpack and Rollup do that for you. And so I'm talking about in-browser JavaScript modules. Go check out my video about in-browser versus build time modules to get more detail there. But with in-browser modules, you must use an import map in order to say, here is the name of my module, and here's the URL of my module. 